Welcome back, folks. This is Astro. So, welcome to part 10 of Let's Play Super Mario World. So, in the last episode, we completed, like, uh, Castle 4, I believe it was, and now we're heading into Soda Lake. Now, I'm not sure if I did this particular stage before. I don't remember if I did. It was back in 2023 when I was last playing through this game. I've done a couple episodes here finishing up, like, the cheese bridge area and stuff like that so basically you're just going to get to see this stage kind of the second time if I've already done it but originally I also thought that there was kind of like a secret exit in this particular stage but I you know I kind of believe that it's just once you beat the stage it just goes to star road so however it goes this is yeah this episode would just kind of be an aquatic episode because there's a couple water stages in this particular one there's also like a water stage earlier in forest of illusion so we're going to get to some of that but yeah, I wanted to kind of take my time with the Forest of Illusion stages just because I know that, that some of those are like the sweet spot of the game. Some of those are pretty interesting, just the stage designs and stuff like that. So we're just going to have some good times with those. Definitely recommend if you're going to order a pizza or something like that, if you haven't by now and you're going to order a pizza, this would be a pretty good time to do so, I'd have to say. It's based on that relative pitch. But yeah, I decided to go to the top secret area to get some stuff, so we're just going to stock up here because I just don't feel like tackling that stage as small Mario. This would have to say, but pretty good stuff here. So it's just a hot June day. It's kind of amongst that particular pitch, as we have to suppose. It's some good concepts, and, uh, yeah. <clears throat> watching the news, stuff like that, I suppose, yeah. I think even Yoshi would be helpful on this particular stage. I mean, for the most part, there's not many stages where you'd have to say, I mean, I've noticed as I've gotten older with this particular game, there are some stages that I actually admit that I may not want Yoshi, but it's not very common. I mean, obviously you can't take him to the ghost houses or the castles, but just being able to say, but I guess you could with like a cheat or something. Like, I don't know. It seems like there's some sort of cheat that possibly you could take Yoshi to those sorts of places. But I just would have to suppose that certain stages may just not be equipped for him. But this is one that probably would be beneficial. I mean, he can eat the fish and things like that. But he still gets hit by the missiles. So it's just kind of, you know, have to do a thing. You'll see that Yoshi doesn't last very long. This, yeah. That's why I equipped to get Fire Mario here, just to uh, help things even further. But, now this is a royal kind of pain of a stage, I just would have to say. I didn't really appreciate this stage that much. It's not, I mean, this is, a uh, like, normally the difficult, I mean, this one's just kind of like a real tacky type stage. It's not to say it's, like, like bad to the sense where it ruins the game, but it's just kind of, con this is one that kind of is less fun and more challenging, I'd have to say. It's kind of one of those. I suspect that some of those stages are going to be like that, like the seek the final area of the game after you get past the Bowser world and that sort of stuff, as we have to say. But it happens to be a thing. It's just kind of <clears throat> it really happens to be the concept. But I look after it. Um, yeah, it just kind of boils down to like the. Uh, it boils down to like the concepts here as far as that particular kind of goes, so. Yeah, this is definitely a great snackage game, I would have to say. This the particular concept about it. But yeah, here we're done with this stage. That just kind of happens to be a thing, so it's just a good concept to kind of get that. So, but. The thing, this game is different than Super Mario 3, because if it had been Super Mario 3, there probably would have been, like, an enemy at the end to kind of kill you right there, which is an interesting concept. I guess folks complained about that. I don't know if Nintendo listened and said, okay, we won't do that, but if you notice, like, in Super Mario World, there's not really, um, like, enemies at the end of the stage, you know, if they have pipes that go to, like, different areas, and, you know, before you get to the check, the, 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 the goal point at the end, you know, in Super Mario 3 there would be enemies that would probably screw you over or something like that, just being able to say that that last little batch, but I don't know if they do that this as much in this particular game. That's kind of happens to be a thing. But yeah, so we're finally going to get to the touted Forest of Illusion. I'm not going to tackle Star Road yet. I'll have to figure out when I'm going to do that. It'll probably be interspersed, maybe after, like, the Chocolate Land or something like that, but... Yeah, so these batch of stages, these are like pretty much one of those sweeter spots of the game, I'd have to say, just in particular, as far as that kind of goes. I just look after it, like, 
Now I got a belch. I know. I'm just trying to. It's funny because I haven't eaten, but I'm just looking after it. But yeah. That's what I have to say, but. Uh, yeah, they, they supply Yoshi in this particular world. He's useful enough, so I just looked after this being able to say. There definitely need to be a sequel to this game. Like, if you know about ROM hacks and stuff like that, probably one of my favorite ROM hacks that I've seen that are not just retreads where you would have, like, the Super Mario 3 stuff in, like, a Super Mario World type game. Like, the, the Super Mario Brothers 3 frames, like, the engine that was used, like, the character models that were used for that game in Super Mario World or something like that. But an actual vanilla... ROM hack that goes along with that, I would say probably one of my favorite ones of those would be Super Mario World The Lost Level. That, to me, feels like the true Super Mario World too. This would have to say, uh, Super Mario World The Lost Level is a real great one. Now the only thing about that particular game, I would recommend it if you could download it. And really, there used to be, like, there used to be, like, a uh, website that I used to visit back in like 2013, 2014. I forget what it's called. It might be called like Game Reproductions or Game. It's not Game Hacking, but something. Like it. it might be GameHacking.org or GameReproductions.org. But there used to be like this website that would manufacture like Super Nintendo games that were only released in Japan and stuff like that. So you could get some of the kick ass ones like Super Bomberman 5 and. Star Ocean, some of those type ones. There's games that did, there's game, there's, like, Japan really liked the Super Nintendo, from what I remember. Had a bunch of games there, just stuff like that that you could, you could never play in America and stuff. This had some real great games, some ones. There was, like, some Clock Tower one that, I mean, they had a bunch of games like Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy that were RPGs that Japan just thought the United States wouldn't like. And they never released to market, but there was a website like Game Hacking or I don't know, but Game Hacking might be a cheat code site, but like GameReproductions.com, where they would, you know, they would they would translate the game to English and then put it on a United States Super Nintendo cartridge so you could buy it and play it for your Super Nintendo, which is pretty bona fidely awesome. Originally, I was going to do that back in the day, and the thing about it is, on top of that, they even had a few Mario ROM hacks to where if you could get the patch for the ROM hack where you could figure out how to get it to like Super Mario World and stuff, you could actually buy a Super Nintendo game and play a ROM hack on. I might have said this before, I don't know if I said this in an early episode, but you could play like a ROM hack on an actual Super Nintendo that you bought from like a pawn shop or a game store or something. That just kind of happened. It was pretty awesome. They had some ones. I mean, of course they didn't have I did, I, originally I was going to buy Super Mario World, the Lost Levels, and have that, but the ROM didn't work. I wasn't that good at getting the patch onto the game as far as that kind of went. They weren't able to manufacture it, but they would have done it. I mean, if you can figure it out, say if that website's still around, I don't know if that cat's still doing that sort of stuff. They had like a team of folks that were doing it, but it was pretty awesome. And I'll say, you could definitely get games like Clock Tower and Star Ocean, some of those type ones. You know, this one's to kind of be able to. There's definitely some good games. I just had to say, I mean, I would definitely, I mean, just the fact that they did it. I, I don't remember if they did it for, like, the old Nintendo and, like, you know, other, like, Nintendo 64 things like that. But they at least had the Super Nintendo games. They, they might have had other ones, but... Yeah, this kind of boils down. It's some dope stuff. But yeah, Super Mario World Lost Level is definitely an excellent type game. To me, that's the true Super Mario World 2. Just because, I mean, the only thing I don't like about that particular game is just when you kick, like, the turtles into different enemies, you don't get a 1-up. They kind of remove that feature to make it tougher. So that, that was, that's an, that's a great, I mean, the more you think about it, that's something that you should probably miss about that particular game, because just getting one-ups that way really helps, but I think they just removed that function at all. The more, like, even if you get a star and you hit a bunch of enemies, you don't get a one-up. So, that, I mean, that's a pretty good function. I wish that they would have kept that, but they did that just to make it tougher. And another thing that you can't do in that game is you can't press start and select to leave a stage. If you start a stage, you have to complete it or die to get out of it, which... Is this kind of annoying, but I mean, it's a great game. I mean, the level design they outdid Nintendo in some cases with like the ghost houses and stuff like that. But it's just kind of the concept that, like, it's this 
kind of tougher in this kind of thing. But it's a brilliant game. I would definitely recommend trying to get that manufactured on cartridge and stuff. But yeah, just some good stuff. So, Mason, yeah. So I gotta get some of this taken care of. My cat wants to hang out and stuff like that. So I'll get that taken care of. But yeah, I would just get ready to munch on the pizza. Four solutions coming. Subscribe for more fun. Thanks for watching. And of course, have a wonderful night.